Welcome to Worship at Home with Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Linwood, Washington. Today, Jesus reminds us that in all that we say and all that we do, we are representing Jesus himself. It is challenging work and we will need the Holy Spirit to guide us, but the rewards are great when our words are received as words from Christ himself. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that your faithfulness is as high as the heavens. Happy are those who sing your praise and celebrate your righteousness all day long.
Let us pray. Steadfast God, you greet us as a loving parent and patiently love us beyond all measure. May we offer that same kindness to all whom we encounter, knowing it is Christ whom we greet as we welcome others. Amen. The reading today is from the 28th chapter of Jeremiah, verses five through nine. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the 12, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Welcome. Today we're talking about that word, welcome. What does that word mean? Well, it means to invite people in. It means to bring someone else into your home, your heart, or just let them know that they are loved and valued. Welcoming people is one of the things we do best at Gloria Day, but it's not always that easy. Sometimes it can be scary to welcome someone who is new or different than we are. Luckily, we've Jesus to show us the way. Jesus shows us what it means to be welcoming. And it's especially important to remember during Pride Month. And Jesus teaches us to be radically welcoming. And that means to invite all people into the family of God, even people who might not be so nice to us or people that we don't know very well. And Jesus invited everyone to come to God. Jesus was even friends with one of the high priests. 
And it's so great that we have Jesus' example to follow when we think about what it means to be welcoming and inclusive. And the Bible is great, and it does give us some rules to follow so that we can live in peace with God and with our neighbors. We just need to be careful that we don't exclude or turn someone away because they don't exactly fit into the mold of what we view as a Christian. As Lutherans, we rely on God's grace, and we know that we don't always follow the rules, but God loves us and welcomes us anyway. So how can you be more welcoming this week? Well, maybe you can send a note or a message to someone you haven't talked to in a while. Or maybe you can let someone know that God loves them when they are feeling down. However you do it, when you welcome someone and show them love, you are being a true Christ follower. Have a great week. Bye. The three goals of the Peace Corps are, one, to help the people of interested countries in meeting their need for trained men and women, two, to help promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the people served, and three, to help promote a better understanding of other peoples on the part of Americans. The second goal, to promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the people served, was a particular focus during my own Peace Corps training in 1996. We were reminded that as Peace Corps volunteers, we were representatives of the United States and that everything we said and everything that we did would serve as a reflection not only on ourselves, but on our nation. We wanted to show the people with whom we worked the best of who we were as Americans so as to break down stereotypes and to offer a more complete picture of the citizens of the United States in all of their diversity. As hard as I tried to fulfill that second goal in my first few weeks as a trainee living in the home of a Polish family, I inadvertently bumped up against it one day, reinforcing a stereotype that I hadn't intended to reinforce. One day, as I was rummaging about in my rather large suitcase, my host father stopped by my room and saw what I was doing. He was already suspicious as to why I was there in the first place. He had great pride in his country, and he thought that we had come to rescue, in his words, poor Poland. So when he saw my oversized suitcase, he erupted. Why do you need such a large suitcase, he asked in Polish, a language I barely had a handle on at that point in my training. Did you think that our stores are still empty? Did you think that Poland didn't have everything that you needed? What I couldn't say, because of the language barrier, is that I had packed my suitcase based on an outdated packing list from the Peace Corps, written at a time when the stores really were empty, and that I had come prepared to stay for two years. But I couldn't say all of that in my basic Polish, and I realized that I had failed that day in fulfilling the second goal of the Peace Corps. What my, fa my host father understood about Americans in that moment was that we were materialistic and could not possibly survive on what was offered in our host country. This certainly was not the message I wished to convey about America, let alone myself. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus continues to give guidance to his disciples, whom he is sending out into the world to proclaim the good news, to heal the sick, and to continue Jesus' work. They have been told that they will be rejected and beaten. They have been assured that they will be given the words to say when they need to say them. 
They have been told that their mission will create conflict, even between family members. They have been assured that they will be cared for, so do not be afraid. And today, Jesus outlines what amounts to be the second goal of being a follower of Jesus when he says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. In other words, you are to help promote a better understanding of Jesus on the part of the people you serve. You are representatives of a crucified and resurrected Savior, and everything that you say and do serves as a reflection not only on yourselves as Jesus' followers, but on Jesus himself. Every time people look at you, they are looking at Jesus. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. So in every interaction, in every relationship, encounter, conversation, and conflict, show them Jesus, because that is who you represent. What does that look like these days to fulfill this so-called second goal of Jesus' commission to us? What does it look like for us to show people Jesus in all that we say and all that we do? What does it look like for people to see Jesus in each one of us in this time of a pandemic, in this time of intensive conversations around race? For clues to answering these questions, I turn to the second chapter of the book of Philippians, where Paul writes, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. These are the things I pray for in these days, both for the leadership of our nation, state, and cities, as well as our own actions as followers of Christ. I pray for love, sharing, compassion, and sympathy. I pray for humility and lifting others up. I pray that we might look first to the interests of others. I pray that we are of the same mind as Jesus Christ. I pray that this love, compassion, and sympathy are shown to those who are suffering from COVID-19, to the families of the nearly half a million people worldwide who have died of the virus to those particularly vulnerable to the disease. I pray that we don't downplay the seriousness of this threat just so that we can get back to our regular lives again. I pray that we, as white people, can bring humility into our conversations on race, stirred up by the death of George Floyd, as we seek to listen to people of color Use our privilege to speak up, to speak out, 
and take specific steps towards becoming anti-racist ourselves and creating a world where all people are indeed equal. I pray that we put others first by doing what is necessary to ensure the health and well-being of all people, even if that means sacrificing our own wants and needs. From wearing face masks, to not gathering in large groups, to maintaining physical distance. I pray that we are of the same mind as Jesus Christ. Nearly a year after the suitcase incident in Poland, after teaching English in a small town nearly 300 miles away, I visited my host family for a weekend. My Polish had dramatically improved and I was able to have more complex conversations with my host family. So my host father took me aside one afternoon, sat me down and said in Polish, now we can talk. And we did. We talked about how the Peace Corps had been invited by the Polish government to fill in the gap of English language teachers until enough Polish people were trained to teach English themselves. We talked about the United States' perception of Poland and Poland's perception of the United States. We talked about why I had come with so much stuff and how I would have packed differently had I known what was really available in the stores in 1996. Jesus told his disciples, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. My host father welcomed me that day, a representative of the United States and a follower of Jesus. In our conversation that day, we came to an understanding of one another by listening, asking questions, and being open to each other's stories. Together, we fulfilled the second and third goals of the Peace Corps but more importantly, through our sharing, our compassion, and indeed, our humility, we were of the same mind as Jesus Christ. And in the friendship that has remained to this very day, nearly 25 years later, we have been richly rewarded. Amen. Thank you.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of compassion, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future, especially when that future seems so uncertain. Hear us, O oh God. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, especially those afflicted by COVID-19 and those we name now, either silently or out loud. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O God. God of community, we give thanks for all of the people who are worshiping at home today. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O God. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give offerings and tithes to the church in gratitude for all of the ways that God first gave to us. You can mail your financial gift to the church give online, or through a bill pay with your bank. Thank you for your generosity. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you.